This is Joe with US Sander, and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to install one of the S26 light kits on a Hummel or Galaxy Sander. The light kit comes with a light, a cord, various connectors, as well as mounting brackets and hardware. Depending on what machine you're hooking this up to, as to what connectors you're going to need, we're going to be using these connectors on the Hummel because it has an original factory switch box. If you've got one of the aftermarket switch boxes, you will need some of these connectors. First, we're going to install the mounting bracket. On both machines, the light mounts in place of the original carrying handle. So you're going to need to remove your side cover, remove the sandpaper, and then remove the top roller. This will unthread on newer machines. Older machines may have a set screw here holding this handle in place. Next, we need to remove these three screws that hold the roller assembly in place. And then remove the roller assembly itself. With that removed, we can remove the two bolts that hold this handle on, one on the outside and one on the inside. You'll need a 13 millimeter wrench to do that. Your brackets have a long side and a short side. We want the long side facing out on the Hummel. That gives us more clearance if you're using a carry handle so it can fit in behind this bracket for the wall roller. Both of these brackets are going to be facing this direction. Use your bolt and washer on the outside and the nut on the inside. Just finger tighten those bolts. Then you want to take your light and bracket and that will bolt in between here. You can point this light how you like. There is a little bit of freedom for it to move side to side. Once you get that light positioned the way you want it, go ahead and tighten down the bolts here and here. Now that we have the light installed, we need to hook up the wiring. Make sure you have your power disconnected. You remove the cover off this box. Now that we've got the cover removed, we do need to drill a hole for the wire to get in there. I recommend drilling it down in this lower corner where there's not much behind it. You can drill it pretty much anywhere except over here because this will be in the way of your wire coming in. So we're gonna mark where we're gonna drill the hole. We wanna drill that right here. You don't wanna drill the hole with the box install, cover installed because your drill bit could hit one of the wires inside. To drill the hole, I recommend using one of these step drill bits. You can get these at Harbor Freight or most any tool store. We need to drill at least 11 16 diameter. You can go to 3 quarter inch. Once you've drilled that hole, make sure you remove any burrs on the back side. Take your fitting that goes through the hole. And you want to put the nut on and tighten that up good so that it doesn't rotate. It's up to you what direction you want to point that in. I find that pointing down this direction or to the side usually works best. Take your cord, you want to plug that into the light and make sure that you leave yourself enough room to get to your strand relief here. 
and then give yourself plenty of extra for inside the box. This light will work on 110 volt. That's why we leave this plug on here in case you have a machine that already has a 110 outlet wired up. You want to take and cut off this if you're hard wiring into the box like we are. And then feed your wire through here. Now we need to cut the insulation off part of this so that we can split our wires off to connect. Our two hots will connect on here and the lower terminal here. They're right next to the R and N. Those are our two main power lines coming in. So when we connect this, this light will be on as long as the machine is plugged in. Once you have that insulation stripped away, you want to strip the ends of these wires and crimp on the ends that we're going to be needing. For the black and white wire, we're going to use these little spade connectors. For the green ground wire, you can install either this quarter inch eyelet that will fit on the stud down here, or if you have a double pin here that the ground wire connects to, we can also connect on there with one of these. Next, we loosen up these wires here. Connect your wire on the lower one, tighten the screw, and then connect your second wire to the top one. You may need to use a pair of pliers to get your wires in there. Tighten that screw, reconnect our ground wire here, and connect your ground wire here, or if you're connecting it on the lug, you will need a 10 millimeter socket to loosen that nut up and install your new ground wire. Now you want to put any excess wire that you don't need inside the box and then you can tuck wires behind the motor or use a zip tie to hold it on here however you choose. Make sure you tighten up this nut so that the wire doesn't pull out. If your Hummel has one of these new style switch boxes, these are push connect terminals on it that's where you're going to need to use some of these connectors. If it has the meter, you'll already have these jumper terminals on your main wires. And so you want to use these wires, ends on your new wire, and connect it between the yellow and the blue. If you don't already have these connectors on it, make sure you put these yellow connectors on your wires be sure that's pointing down because if it points up, it can short out against the box lid. You don't want to use these wires and connect your power to this connector here because that can cause a voltage drop across there and those will overheat. Make sure that your main power wires go directly to the switch with these terminals. There's a lot of space in here for the wire to come in. So you can drill the hole any number of places. Right here or over here are both good places. Just make sure that you mark where you're gonna put it and drill that hole so that it doesn't interfere with this switch. We can connect the ground to either one of these terminals on the end. This ground wire connects directly to the 
ground lug on the box. This one comes from our power input, so it doesn't really matter which one we connect our ground on with. You want to connect your black with black and white with white, but it won't really make a difference in this situation because this is 220 and they are both hot lines. You're going to have a connection something like this if you have one of these meters. If you don't have the meter, then this wire will not be on it. Those will connect right back on our switch. And now, whenever this is plugged in, the light will be on. Plug it in and make sure that your light is working. Your light should come on right away, even with the switch off. Now you can reinstall your screws that hold this cover on. And reinstall the top roller. Goes right back through here. Make sure you tighten up your screws good, but don't over tighten them. We don't want to strip off the threads. This light is fully adjustable. You can point it in whatever direction you want, set your bracket how you want. The one thing to be aware of is when you bump into the wall with your bumper, you want to make sure that you set your light back so that it won't contact the wall because you don't want this to leave any marks. So just use a square or a wall if you have one handy to just set that so that it's back just a little bit. To install the light on a Galaxy, first you're going to need to remove the sandpaper. Then you can remove this roller assembly should pull up and come right out. Now inside here there will be a nut on each side that holds the handle in place. You're going to need to remove that and remove this handle. Once you've removed the handle, you can install the brackets. On the Galaxy, you want the long side of the bracket to be against the side of the machine because if you put it this way it will stick out past the bumper and can run into the wall. With your brackets in place there, put your light between the two and use the other two bolts to hold it in place. There is a little bit of extra so you can move this side to side about a half inch. So if you want to try to center it on the front of the machine, you can do that. Go ahead and tighten your bolts. This does move in and out to some degree. So if you want it further back or out further. With the light bolted firmly in place, you can put this back in. connect our wiring, we're going to need to take the cover off of this switch box. There are four screws here, and you're also going to want to loosen up the two screws next to the switch. With that switch cover removed, we are going to have to pick a good place for the wires to come in. On this one, we can put it anywhere down along here. If you've got a capacitor up in this box, that usually sits right here. And so you're going to have to come in somewhere up in this corner. So if we're putting a hole up in this corner, we want to remember the size of this nut. Make sure you have clearance 
and I would recommend drilling the hole from the inside out. Put a mark there where you're going to drill the hole. I recommend using one of these step drill bits to drill the hole. They're fairly cheap to buy at Harbor Freight or most other tool stores. We need to drill this to 11 sixteenths or three quarters of an inch. Once you've got the hole drilled through there, you want to install the strain relief and tighten it up. Run your wire through here. Most of these Galaxy switches have screw terminals, so you're going to need to use these terminals on the ends of your wires and the eyelet for the ground. First we're going to connect our ground, remove the nut from the ground wires, put our new ground wire on that lug as well, and reinstall your nut. We've got our main power in wires go to this side of the switch. We want to connect the light to that same side of the switch. If you've got one of the old style switches, you're going to have your power in wires on one side instead of one end. Just make sure that you're connecting your two wires to the power in wires. Once we've got that connected, we can put the cover back on. Make sure when you put the cover back on, you don't pinch any wires in the process. You want to tighten this nut so that this wire doesn't pull out. Now your light can be plugged in. And we want to plug in the power and make sure the light works correctly. With the power on, you can move this light to the point where you want. Just be aware that if you move it too far forward, it can hit the wall. You want to drop your drum and check and make sure that your light is back from where the bumper would contact the wall. That way you don't mar anything 